Welcome to another empowering episode of Empower Her. My name is Bess Machinemere and I am your host for this program. You know, Empower Her is a program that is designed for that woman out there who is ready to take charge of her world. And today, we embark on an essential topic, nurturing young women's leadership abilities. In this episode, we recognize the incredible potential of young women and the importance of nurturing their leadership abilities. We explore strategies, resources, and the support systems available to empower these young leaders. Now, as we delve into the strategies and resources for nurturing young women's leadership abilities, we invite you, we, want, we welcome your thoughts, your questions, your experiences. So please connect with us on our social media platforms, Facebook at Spectrum NG and X at Spectrum T online. You can reach out to me personally on Facebook, LinkedIn and X at Best Matching Emery. Your input is invaluable in shaping this conversation. For now, let's go on a quick break and when we come back, Empower Her will continue full swing. Welcome back to Empower Her. You know, over the years, we women, we've not really been given our flowers. We've not been given the voice to talk. And that is why Empower Her is the program for the today woman. So let us begin by evaluating the potential of young women, especially their fresh perspective. We need to give it to these young women. They are innovative ideas. They are boundless energy. They are a force for positive change in our society. Our focus today is on the strategies and resources that nurture young women's leadership abilities. Now, the first one is education. We all know that education uh, is a powerful tool for young women. We have scholarships, workshops, even online courses. All of these offer them opportunities to build their leadership skills and their knowledge. The next one is mentorship. You know that I always talk about mentorship here on Empower Her. Why? Mentorship is a guiding light for young women. Mentorship programs, networking opportunities, and leadership conferences connect them with their role, model, their role models who, of course, inspire and guide them. The next one is building a supportive community. Now, this is crucial. Women's organizations, online communities, and local initiatives offer resources and networks. Now, access to information is key. Online resources, books, and publications, along with relevant research and data, empower young women with knowledge. Then finally, we have support through grants, scholarship, and financial literacy programs. This ensures that young women have the resources that they need. Of course, advocacy and awareness campaigns, along with media uh, and communication, play a vital role in promoting gender equality and leadership opportunities. And of course, we have the practical experience. This is crucial. Internship, apprenticeship, and volunteer work provide young women with hands-on leadership opportunities because it's one thing to theorize this and it's another to actually practice. So personal development is another thing. It's a foundation. Emotional intelligence training and resources for health and well-being ensure young women are empowered in all aspects of their life. Now, this is a bonus one for you, empowerment workshops. Focusing on conference, on confidence building and self-advocacy, strengthen the leadership abilities of young women. And of course, you know how we do it here on Empower Her. This is a program where I do not do this alone. So it's not like Bess is always here talking and telling us how women are behaving or uh, the experiences that women are passing through. No, and of course, with me today, I have two amazing young ladies. Oh, they are young ladies and they are powerful young women. And even now, they are making serious change in their, in their community, in their catchment zone, and in their school. Yeah, don't tell, them, don't tell them that I told you that. But now, we'll go on a short break. When we we'll come back, I will introduce these young ladies to you. Now, you want to be here for this conversation. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Empower Her. Now, today we have been talking about um, leadership for young women. And now we engage in a very lively conversation with young women who are actively pursuing their leadership journeys. Of course, we'll gain insights into the experiences of these two young leaders and how they have benefited from all the strategies that we already mentioned and, of course, other resources that they are going to tell us about. And please help me welcome the president and vice president of um, Faculty of Law, University of Uyo, Ms. Esther Okon and Ms. Abasiono Okon. Welcome to Empower Her Ladies. Thank you. Thank you I am much. so happy to finally have you guys here on set. How are you feeling today, Esther? Well, I'm feeling so excited. I'm feeling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you. And how about you? About I'm feeling Sanya? very excited because I'm a huge fan of Empower Her series. Thank and you. And it's a pleasure. Thank you so to be much. Thank you oh, very it's much. a pleasure too. <laughs> Thank you. And so, you know, how did you girls do it? Two women, president and vice president, especially law that we're meant to understand is male dominated. Is male dominated at the moment. So how did you girls manage to bag these two top leading positions in your faculty? Are there no males in your faculty? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that we just dared to grab the bull by the horns. Like before I emerged as the president faculty of law, the last elected was over like 18 plus years ago. Oh, wow. I was in the early 2000s. So the when, last female elected. Yeah, the last female elected. So, but we had an interim um, president before mm -hmm. I emerged. Mm -hmm. So when I started campaigning, for the Gen Z's that we have, mm. there, it seemed impossible, mm. but um, I believe that it was possible because with God, you can do anything. That's why my mantra was hashtag endless possibilities. Mm. I believe that if you harness the possibilities out there, we can bring out the best in Lawson mm. University of Women. That is really inspiring. How about you, Esther? Now, this is the question. Leadership is a very big role, even for anybody. It's a very big role, and you have to combine your duties as a leader to that of your duties as a student. So what made you decide, you know what, regardless of anything and everything, I'm going to contest and run for office? Well, you know, apart from, apart from the needs of Lost Night, of which I feel so very cap capable and um, I, um, assured in myself that I have the ability to, to, um, to do what they want and to make sure that their needs are met, I, I do not like um, not being in the spotlight. Like there was a time I was in a meeting and it was like I was non-existent in that mm. meeting because at that time I was nobody, I was not a lady of value. But they have been bringing it in my faculty, you carve a niche for yourself, mm. make sure that you, you've written your names in the sand of time. So I was like, okay, fine, I do have the ability to become the Lausanne Vice President. Of course, I'm academically sound, not, not the Aristotle kind of academically sound. Mm. And I, ca I have what it takes to take Lausanne to a greater height. Why can't I go for it? Mm. What was the hindrances? Mm. You yeah. know, you said something. You said that you were a nobody. I would like to disagree politely <laughs> that you were never a nobody. <laughs> just that your abilities were not out there for everybody yeah. to see that this is what you are capable of doing. Okay. But I like what you said, how you want to write your names in the sand of time. Yeah. Now... When you guys finally leave and uh, hopefully get called to the bar, every um, internally in the University of Rio, you will both be remembered as the first female elected, female president and female vice president of your faculty. Congratulations to you ladies. This <laughs> Thank is really you. inspiring. Thank you. Your, you guys are really inspiring. And of course, that is what Empower Her is all about, to encourage women to know that you can reach for the stars if you want to do it. There is nothing, there is no force that can stop you because the power of one woman is like the power of 100 people. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. Now, um, you, Abasiono, what made you decide that you're going to do this? What made you decide that you, you want to run for office? Okay, one thing about me is that before I embark on any journey, I love mm. to consult God. Mm. I'm a Christian, mm. so <laughs> I actually um, seek to God for like, three years plus on this particular role. So that was why um, even when I started campaigning and we had some lots of um, storms and turbulence, mm. I knew that I would sell through because mm. I knew who sent me there. So besides the God factor, you have to prepare yourself mentally 
because trust me, <laughs> there's a whole <laughs> lot of <laughs> problems out there facing the woman mm. leader when you want to yes. take up the mantle. Mm. So yes. there were sometimes I wouldn't like cry it like mm. in the toilets without like nobody like seeing mm. me and all mm. because as a leader you can't be seen to be weak and yes. that, yeah and cry and have emotions, yeah. have emotions. Yeah. <laughs> that you, you, that you don't have emotions you yeah. strip your yeah, emotions the moment <laughs> you take on the mantle of a leader yes but that is not how it is yes but the thing is that balancing your emotional intelligence mm -hmm. with your intelligence your normal intelligence is actually the key balancing both of them which of course i'm going to talk about soon but before then Esther, what do you ha what is your personal story? What ignited your passion to go into leadership? Because you could have easily just decided to just study because that's what you went to school to do anyway. And of course, you can even do other things while in school. But what ignited your passion to decide to take on this responsibility as a leader? Um, thank you very much for that question. You know, before me, there were, um, there were very good um, um, female vice presidents. We have the likes of... Um, Madam Vivian Isong. Yes, we have the likes of Madam Krishna Anthony. So this person in the early twenties. No, no, <laughs> not no. in the early twenties. Just recently. Yeah, just recently, about but two, three years ago, in my faculty. faculty. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're like my predecessors. Yes. Okay. So um, when I saw their giant strides, when I saw what they were doing and what they were capable of, I looked within me and I had a little bit of that capability that they had, even though not up to their standard. But they they motivated me. Okay, it was them that made me um, decide to go into this office because they were doing exceedingly well, like they were, they were doing so very well. So I was like, okay, fine, let me also go there and do well as well. Mm. Yeah. You, can, you can do it as yes, well. If I they can, can do, it. do it. If they did it, I can do it as well. Yes. And so, Abasiono, how about you? Now, now, this is what I want to talk about right now. You know, deciding that you want, you said something that... Uh, Taking on the role of a leader is, you, you have, you ha it, it takes a lot from you. Mm -hmm. Now, you, it is important that people note that you don't just wake up and decide, because Abasano did it, I can do it. But there are certain skills that you need to have in order to make the most or to give, to give your full, to be able to handle the office that you're running for. So what would you say are those unique abilities that a person, a woman, a young woman should have before they even consider going into leadership roles? Okay, um, I would start by going biologically because we women, the way we were um, created and formed by God, we are um, very emotional. So mm. first of all, I would say that you should have more of emotional intelligence because you are taking a big role so you cannot be seen to be crying just because one program did not go your way and mm. all of that so you mm. have to be emotionally intelligent mm. and also to you have to study the people you want to lead and the environment too and then um, work 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 in like maybe perfection but not really perfection though mm. but work in excellence in that field they mm. say and they also if you want to take the big gun you have to learn how to shoot with the toy guns what i mean is that you have to start by taking up little positions to show people that you are capable mm. like am um, i in my year to one credibility. yeah to be credibility like in my year two i was the um, assistant secretary for my chamber, just as Uda Uda my chambers. In my year three, I was the director of programs for the same chamber. In, in the same year three, I was this um, special advisor to the then SUG president on welfare for the disabled, in which we brought in um, the now um, governor, Umoy, not to come and help the disabled students. In my year four, I was the um, Vice Chairperson, Membership and Correspondence for the same um, chamber, Justice Uda Unoma Chambers, Faculty of Law. Then in that same year, for I had to drop that mantle to start campaigning for president. Now, over time, it wasn't too hard convincing people that I have the skills that mm -hmm. you need. Because they've already need. seen you yeah, work yeah, over, over years. time. So be, 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 besides taking other positions, you have to go for mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. Trust me, between that four or three years period, before I started campaigning, I used to go for conferences, a whole lot of um, mentorship programs online and offline. So now it, it shows that you are willing to learn mm. and unlearn. Mm. Yes. So and also to you have to liaise with the people that have gone ahead of you up there to to um, have better experience mm. in execution of projects and also collaborating with great minds, <laughs> ladies too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that would make make it big and yeah. excellent. So thank you very much. You know much. what I learned from this story? Consistency. Yeah. You've been consistently putting in the work. Since your year two, you've been consistent. Now, we can actually follow your footprints and know, okay, she did this first. 
a young woman who wants, okay, I can actually do this. We know, okay, she did this first, so I can do this. Maybe not exactly mirror it the way you did it, yeah, but being consistent. Another thing I saw is the passion. Because you cannot consistently wake up every day and do these things without actually being passionate about it. Mm -hmm. The other one I saw was determination. Now, you can imagine all the things I've learned from, <laughs> from just mm -hmm. like a minute or two that you spoke. Thank the other you. thing that I noticed was the determination for you. The consistency, the determination, you knew what you wanted. And, of course, the fearlessness. Mm -hmm. You went ahead for it. Imagine um, a law student leading, being in a leading position in an actual chamber. Kudos, girl. You <laughs> are you. Empower Her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should, I should name you the face of Empower Her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so you mentioned something about mentorship and mm -hmm. coaching. And I like how you emphasize that all the years that all through before you got to this point a lot of people have influenced you positively how about you esther do you have what do you think is the place because i talk about mentorship like all the time on empower her because i feel that mentorship can never be over and over overrated or overemphasized. what do you think is the place of mentorship and what role has mentorship played played in your life and in your career so far Thank you very much for that question. Well, as you said, the role of um, mentorship cannot be overemphasized. I mean, you cannot know it all. Mm. So there are some persons that have been there before you. There are some persons that have a achieved more than you. So you need to like liaise with them, go under their tutelage, mm. let them train you, let them drill you, let them break you so that you can oh. become what you want to become. Mm -hmm. Okay. For instance, I, had, I have um, a mentor. Her name is Madam Esther Bandy. She was the immediate um, chief judge of our, of, our, um, of our faculty, faculty of law. Yeah, so she helped me. She shaped me to be able to balance leadership and all the rules I have uh, um, occupied in the past with my academics so that one part of my life will not suffer while mm -hmm. the other one is blooming as yeah. well. So she helped me to balance it. She helped me to stress. I'm a very, I'm a very lazy person. Mm. I do not like working <laughs> to begin with. But she helped me. She helped to bring me out of my comfort zone. And she, she played a very big part of my being here as the vice president of mm. the faculty. She, she really helped me a lot. So I would advise that any young lady that wants to be a leader should get a mentor mm. and someone that is way above her. Yes, yes, that's my advice. And you know that sometimes you, you, you don't even have to know your mentor. Like sitting here now, sitting here now, you have some people who are watching you right now mm -hmm. and they are being encouraged. You are mentoring someone even without knowing it. So, of course, we have another episode on Empower Her where we talked about strictly mentorship and coaching for young women. I would advise you to go and seek that episode out on YouTube and watch because you are going to learn a, two, a, a thing or two or 10 or even 20 from that episode. And now coming back to you, Esther, what are some of the challenges that you have faced so far in your role as the vice president of your faculty? Um, beginning from when I, I started my campaign, you know, she came out as a female running for the position of the That's Abasiono. Yes, Abasiono. Well, I came out for, when I came out for the, um, the position of the vice president as a female. So I had some persons telling me, Esther, do you think it's fair having a female president and mm, having a female vice mm. president? Why don't you give the men the opportunity? So that's like one of the challenges that I have faced so far. Some 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 persons do not accept me. Mm. Female female tickets, they have that stereotype and all of that. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yes. If I was a guy, I would feel the same way. So I don't blame them. Right, right. Yeah, but because I'm a female <laughs> and because I'm an advocate for females. <laughs> Empower yes, her. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's one of the challenges. Also, the um, another challenge that I have is the fact that some persons do not believe I can do it. Some persons do not believe that I have what it takes. Even though I have emerged, even though I have worked closely with Madam President to put in so many projects out there, they still doubt our abilities. So that's one of the challenges that we have. Of course, um, you know, you know. Um, sometimes we need um, we need to work with some persons as mm. uh, as leaders. We need to partner with some persons, but some persons take advantage of it. Yes. The fact that I am a female, mm. so I cannot like totally get what I want. Yes. So that's one of the challenges. I, w I was waiting for that part when people want to take advantage of you because of your gender, because they feel you are not strong enough, or you have some things that they might want to exploit. Mm. Uh, but say no. 
Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, how about you? What are some of the challenges that you have faced, not just as the president of your faculty now, but over the years in all the small leadership roles that you have been taking up? What are some of the um, challenges that you have faced? And of course, how were you able to overcome them all? Okay, before I answer that question, I would like to put something out there. Just because people believe that you don't have the ability to, doesn't mean that you actually don't have, Do not the, have ability the ability to. to. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so um, we should not listen to what people say. Because if I did, I wouldn't be sitting down today as president. I would mm. have given up and said, please, I'm not going for it any longer. Mm. So that's why self-confidence is very, very paramount mm. in an emerging leader. Because you have to believe in yourself first. Because other people are believing in you too. If mm. I said I'm not going again, you have people that are following me at the back and would yeah. just stop working behind me too. Yeah. So you have to believe I, in I yourself. I have somebody on Empower Her who said that she solely believes that other people's destiny are tied to her <laughs> own. So even when she wants to give up, she'll just look at those people. I wonder yes. if she knows do, those people by <laughs> name. But she'll just look at those people and be like, I cannot, cannot, I cannot afford mm -hmm, to do that. Mm -hmm, not at all. <laughs> okay, and then speaking of the challenges, um, besides bias being a challenge, um, lack of representation, and then um, limitation on opportunities that are out there for the women, um, one of the problems that some women will not like to admit is we women being our own problems mm. actually yes oh wow we women being our own oh, problems wow. <laughs> yes <laughs> because <laughs> that <laughs> was loud yes that it's was loud. loud yes i am going to break the table by saying that no please please <laughs> women are our own problem be believe me not during the campaigns most um most people that voted on besides voting most people that carried our matter on our head were the men surprisingly so men are not really the enemies they are your friends so you mm. have to collaborate with, with them, them work yes. with them work yes with them. And so women out there should learn to hold their sister's hand to help lead because mm. if one person wins you win too yes. because if you are um, friends to the governor per se. You are the governor by association. I, 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 I agree <laughs> yes. with you. I agree with you, Madam President. <laughs> yes, so I feel that the women should stop the hate, mm. stop the envy, mm. stop the jealousy, and just let the women breathe too. Let, the, <laughs> and let they fellow say women breathe. breathe. Let fellow women breathe. And they say that, TikTok. I know that the, the power that comes when women work together yeah. will, will literally be a force to be reckoned with. Of course. And of guess course. what? I have an episode in Power where we talked about are uh, women really the problem of other women actually the title of that episode i think was women supporting or pulling down other women so mm -hmm. and i'm thankful that this is this is the <laughs> best time to be a woman yes. because women are understanding the power that comes when we all work together mm -hmm. and more women are you know doing the right thing mm -hmm. by supporting other women so mm -hmm. you were saying something before you deviated yeah, so um, those were the challenges even till now that we have because most times um the whole women factor is a really really huge problem for us you know mm. and I, I i'm still waiting to see um the first female president of nigeria oh. it's going to be a really really beautiful it's sight be really but be, before we reach that promise line to take a whole lot a whole lot so uh, this is still me advocating that women should stop the step hate up. step up believe support in yourself each other. and support each other and also to women should stop seeing it as a competition against, against the men. men yes Thank against you. the men like um in my faculty somebody came to see me and the person was like oh okay we had and um, we've had a, a female president i said no 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 don't say that we have the next president now you will ne 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 never hear someone say we have the male president yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so we should stop generalizing <laughs> that's, that's english like um or some positions or all positions that we should just believe in whoever takes the mantle mm. and we'll pull through together thank yes. you very much thank you so much you answered that so beautifully <laughs> and of course when we have our first female president i'll we'll be right here I will be shouting. Yes, I will course. be screaming. Be <laughs> but I, I love what you said about don't make it a fight against men. Yeah. Because in as much as empower her is all about giving women their flowers and amplifying women's voice, we are not fighting the men. Yes, it is yes. not quarrel. Mm -hmm. We just want we just want to be recognized for what we are already doing because women are doing a lot. You mentioned how it will it will take a lot. For us to get to that promised land mm -hmm. but you also have to appreciate and recognize the fact that women are already doing so so much now esther do you have a female role model a role model who is a woman 
we are not fighting against men. We're <laughs> talking about women. <laughs> Do you have a female role model who, you know, inspired you or is inspiring you to take up this leadership position? Because I like to think that after this, you are moving on to the next bigger and best thing. Okay. Yes, yes. I do have a female role model that um, inspires me. When I listen to her story, I was like, wow. She actually thought of this. This is big. Her name is Sandra Aguebo. I, I do hope I got that correctly. Sandra, Sandra Aguebo. And she's the first female um, she's the first female to own a mechanic workshop here in Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, when I heard it, you know, you know, mechanic work, it's, it's traditionally, yeah, it's traditionally for men. Mm. And for her to have become a mechanic at first, then she now Walking up all the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. all the years. And then finally she had her own mechanic workshop. I mean, like, it was so very captivating. It was so very inspiring. inspiring. She is my role model. Yeah, mm. alongside Madame Ngozi and Iwela, she inspires me as well. How about your Basino? Well, I like bring it home. Mm. My first <laughs> role model, it's my mom. How did I know you? <laughs> it's my that? mom. I, I just, when you said I like bringing it home, I love me to brag. I love no, me to please. brag. Please. Yes. Please. This woman is a force, trust me. Like, um, she's the present treasurer for um, Ni um, Nigerian public relations um, association per se and at the same time she also ran for um secretary for women in academics so mm. like just me seeing her pushing and pushing mm. and all of that it inspires me and also the dean faculty of law professor moji sola is saying she's amazing she's wonderful like the, the way she handles administration the faculty it's really amazing like there's just That's a whole lot of, of change. Law. Yeah, the yes. spirit of the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spirit of the law. <laughs> yes, yes, she's really amazing. And and one thing about me is that I don't have um, a specific mentor long term. What I did, for example, now you are a mentor to me right now because. I, I like your hair, I like Thank your dress, you. I like um, the way you speak. Thank so you. you have inspired me for today. Thank you. Tomorrow I'll see another um, lady Happily. thriving. Tomorrow, tomorrow <laughs> I'll try to inspire you more. Yes, yeah, inspire me more. So tomorrow I'll see another lady um, thriving. I'll be like, oh, I like the way she carries um, administration mm. and all of that. Her charisma. Yeah, charisma. So there's a whole lot of ladies out there that are doing so well. So kudos to all the ladies out there. I'm rooting for you. I'm your number one fan. Oh, <laughs> uh, you, you, you have to get in the line. <laughs> Okay, so um, to you again, what is your experience so far and how do you think that education and knowledge contributes to um, building, um, uh, building leadership skills as a woman? Because you know, some people say that you don't really have to uh, go to school, you don't really have to have formal education before you can be a leader. What role do you think education plays in, uh, in honing and harnessing your leadership skills as a woman. Okay, and um, there's a particular billboard in my school that says, um, one who doesn't read every day is not um, different from one that doesn't know how to read. Hmm. So, hmm. You, so that's deep. <laughs> yes, very deep. So you cannot um, take out education and knowledge from you emerging and moving forward as a better leader, as a better person, they say. Mm. And one thing that people um, fail to understand is that you need education to have knowledge and you also need knowledge to re-educate because the the um the different height that we have been mm. on this table right now has given us knowledge now it doesn't stop there you have to get that knowledge and re-educate the people that are following you mm. and looking up to you mm. so education is not a one a, a one um person thing it's more of like a we thing mm. where you actually get education get knowledge and also inspire the people around you mm. so that we all grow together and grow well so it's like networking yeah networking you you learn from another person, person. and then you teach you another, teach person, another person. person who also recycle yeah. it. that is deep how about <laughs> you esther yeah she has said it all you need you need to be a reader for you to be a very successful um female leader mm. so i recommend reading and i have some books that i i, I love reading like the 48 laws of power we have um, the art of seduction we have um sacred woman so those are books that female leaders can read and get inspired, get all the, the personal development that they mm. want for whatever position it is that they're occupying. Mm. So of course, reading, reading, is, it's, it's necessary to be a leader. You have to be a reader. Well. You have to, to be a leader. You have to be a reader. reader. <laughs> and I agree with you both. Yeah. Now, we, both of you agree that you need to be educated. 
So since we both agree, or you both agree rather, that education is important if you want to be a good leader, what are those skills that you feel is necessary for a woman to have before she even start thinking about um, getting into any kind of leadership position? What are those skills that you feel are very, they are non-negotiable? You must have, you must develop those skills as a woman, as a person, before you start um, thinking of going into a leadership position? Okay, first off, I would say that for you to be um, a successful, effective and efficient um, young female leader, you must have empathy. Yes, you must have empathy because you cannot always put your views first, thinking it's always right. Mm. You must also consider the feelings, the perspectives of your team members. Mm. Also, you must also be a very strategic thinker because most times as a leader, there are some times that your um, opinion is needed on the spot. Yes. Yeah, besides you're going to say, okay, let me think about it. You must always be strategic in your thinking. Mm. Yes, and you must, have, um, you must be a self-developer. Yeah, and you must also have um, conflict resolution skills. Yes, so um, you don't speak violence all, always as the solution. You must learn to talk to people. You must learn to um, have the skill of people management. You must, ha you must learn to have like so many skills, mentorship and all, all of that. So mm -hmm. there's like a whole lot of long list. Yeah, skills. interpersonal skills that you need to have to be a, a good and functioning young um, female leader. And for you, these are non-negotiable skills. Yeah, non-negotiable. And then you must be an open communicator. Yes, mm. open communication. Very important. <laughs> very important. <laughs> there is this thing I say that speaking is very important, but if you want to communicate, you have to try to, uh, to find out the language that the person you are speaking to understand. Yeah. Now, I'm not meaning, uh, I don't mean language as in tongue, if the person is speaking English or Hausa or Yoruba mm. or Igbo. No, I mean like what kind of words do they really understand? Like how can I talk in a way that they will really understand what I am saying? Now, I, I've said my own, even if they, if, they, if they don't understand, that is up to them. No, mm -hmm. you're not talking to yourself. Yeah. You're talking for them to understand. And for there to be effective communication, they have to be able to understand you. So that is where effective communication yes, of comes in. Yeah. How about you, Esther? Well, um, for me, I would say, um, alongside what she said, of course, what she said are non-negotiable. You have to have that. But for me, I would also add that you should be someone that's open to change. Mm. The world is the world is evolving. You cannot be holding on to those orthodox ways of doing things. You should be someone that's open to change, open to innovation, open to inventions, so that when persons in your cabinet have new ideas, they can you can work with them and make sure that those new ideas are also actualized. Also, um, another skill is the skill of humility. Yeah. Now, you said earlier before the commencement of this program that humility is not timidity. Humility um, comes with self-confidence as well. Mm. So as a young leader, as a female young leader, you need to be humble, humble to understand that. You know, there's this, there's this um, stereotype that people give that when a, 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 a woman assumes office, she becomes prideful mm. and she doesn't listen to other persons. So as a female leader, you need to have that humility mm. to be able to work with other persons as well as have that self-confidence. Whenever I'm talking about self-confidence, the only person that comes to my mind majority of the times is um, the lead um, queen, Elizabeth. I mm. saw her self-confidence throughout her years, of which I, I came to see, and the ones that I watched in documentaries as well. The way she carried herself with royalty and all of that. So those are one of some of the skills that, as a female young leader, you need to have. You know, you, there are so many things you talked about, and you said how you mentioned how I said that timidity, humility is not timidity, and mm -hmm. I agree with you, and how you should be able to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you talked about orthodox way, you should not hold on to your orthodox way. It felt as if you are talking to somebody directly. No, no, no. It felt as if you are somebody that has refused to adapt <laughs> and to change. But you know, resilience is also a skill that a leader needs, mm -hmm. especially a young leader, because believe it or not, some people will want to ride over you. Some True. people who want to disobey and di disrupt your, your, your leadership and to disobey you. So uh, what, what will she do? And if you talk too much, you are not, you'll be termed that you're not humble and that you are uh, insultive and all of that. But how can a woman, how can a young woman balance resilience? Sometimes you, you, you should be, fe a lot of times you should be flexible. You should also learn how to adapt, how to accept other people's views. Sometimes you, you should also be resilient. You should also know. Yes, this is, this is how it should be. We are not going to short change for anything. So how 
best do you think that as a woman, as a young woman who is in a leading position, you should be able to balance or to handle resilience as one of your skills? Okay, um, there's a, is it a movie or a book that uh, says that you should think like a man? Yes, so you can woman like th and think like a man. So I feel that for you to be a resilient leader, you must learn to be firm, be firm mm. in your decisions, mm. because people wouldn't take you seriously. That oh, don't worry, she would go this way she and understand. go that way. She would understand. <laughs> yes, or that word. Oh, she would change her yeah, mind. Yeah, she would change her mind. So now, or she cannot do anything about yes, it. Yes, so mm -hmm. you being firm isn't you being wicked or hardened. It's just you taking your stand on what is right, mm. just, and would ethical. make the yeah, ethical and make things go better. So a, a, a resilient leader, you actually build strong relationships with people and you also inspire your team members to, mm. to be firm in their actions, their decisions that will bring about productivity and effectiveness mm. in the project that's at hand. Mm. How about you, um, Esther, how do you think resilience will help young women develop their skills or develop, would I say, their confidence as they navigate this, um, relation, this um, leadership role? Well, to me, resilience makes you a lady of value. It makes you a, a lady that persons want to relate with you because of how, how you'd carry yourself. So, um, for, for me, I would say that for you to be able to build resilience, number one, you should have God by your side. I'm a Christian, okay, and we, have, we believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit talks to us. So when you are faced with some situations, the Holy Spirit will, will intercede, communicating with you and tell you what you have to do, what you do not have to do, where you have to speak and where you do not have to speak. Then also, Madam President earlier said that you need to liaise with persons that have been there before you. Because mm. trust me, people have been in this position that you have mm. been, that you are currently. So you need to, you need to liaise with them and, and, ask, and ask from them how they overcame it and how they stood their grounds and still got what they wanted, as well as how the other party got what they wanted. So everybody's on common ground and everybody's happy. Mm. So, liars with persons that are above you, also mentorship comes in. Yes, yes you need to have a mentor because a mentor is going to tell you when to talk, when not to talk, when to, when to, to speak and act and yes. when to just be quiet and just say okay. So, mentorship as well as liaising with persons that have been there before you plus God factor mm. is going to help you to build resilience and be a person of value. I know why I never stop talking about mentorship on Empower Her. Mentorship for me is like walking a path that somebody else already blazed through. Mm -hmm. So you're just, you, you, you're just like following the person's footsteps. Yeah. Or the person is telling you, you know, I have done this. Mm -hmm. it didn't, this is how it came out. So maybe if you do it, but do it in a different way, it mm -hmm. can come out right for you. Yeah. Or maybe you want to replicate it and still see where it leads you. But at least it gives you an idea of what you, or what you expect. And of course, leader, uh, mentorship and coaching cannot be overemphasized, like I said before. So it's also important because when you have a mentor, when you have a coach, not only do you get to enjoy somebody, uh, so riding on somebody else's experience, but they can also um, uh, they can also link you up to resources that will also help you. They can link you up to key persons that can help you, uh, books to read, um, advice. If if I am your mentor and you come to me and this is not really my scope. But I know someone. I can just link you up. Yeah, and that sure. is another thing that mentorship does. Yeah. And of course, this is still Empower Her. We are going to go on a quick break. And when we come back, Empower Her will continue. Welcome back to Empower Her. And if you are just joining us, trust me, you have missed a whole lot. You might want to go to our YouTube channel at Spectrum TV to go and watch, um, to go and start this episode from the beginning because these ladies I have with me, they have been <laughs> spitting fire. They have been giving us back-to-back -back thunder okay. and brimstone. And of course, I also implore you to follow us on our social media platforms, um, uh, Facebook at Spectrum NG, X, X at Spectrum T online. And of course, you can go to our website and watch other wholesome content at www.spectrumtvlife.ng and today we have been talking about women in leadership roles and I have with me two amazing young leaders. They are president and vice president of law faculty, University of Uyo. And now, here's my question for you now. Young women often aspire, I don't know if you've noticed it, but recently young women want to go into male-dominated field. They want to go into engineering. They want to go into tech. They want to go into um, 
uh, what other male dominated mathematics, yeah. um, mm -hmm. technology, they want to go into male dominated field. Now, what strategies and advice would you um, offer them? You know, how to break through these barriers, how to break through the barriers of um, entering into male dominated field? Okay, and uh, besides the um, factor of self confidence, emphasis on following due process is really, really important. For example, when I was doing, I was having campaigns, when I was having campaigns to run for president, um, I would have said, okay, I wouldn't consult people the political mm. way, I wouldn't mm. campaign after I'm a woman, they would just vote for me, so that um, it would be as if they're not voting for a woman. Yes, say. But I like, <laughs> I was out there consulting people 1 a.m., 12 a.m., and all of that. I was literally like thinking like a man, as the book says. Mm -hmm. So for you to um, be successful in that dominated, Profession, you have to follow due process. If you want to be a professor, read the books and bring out your articles, bring out your own books. If you want to be um, this or that, maybe executive uh, position, you have to pay the price. You have to pay the price. So now you don't um, bring in the whole gender factor. Yes. You, you, you bring in more of the value. Yeah, value, competency, and all of that. So you have to pay the price to actually get there. How about you, Miss Esther? Well, for me, I'd say loyalty. Mm. Loyalty, loyalty pays a whole lot. You know, this is these are male dominated fields that we are talking about. So there are like m men in the high positions there. So you need to be loyal to them. If you know that you want to break into this male dominated field and also be a force there, you have to be loyal to the person that already forces there. Yeah. Okay, alongside self confidence and working with them to make sure that whatever plans, whatever goals that they have, are being actualized. So that when you want to come out, it's going to be like they are repaying, they are repaying a debt that they owe to you. Mm. So loyalty counts. Oh, these are really, really good points. These are really, really good points. I would say develop yourself. Always learn. Learn. Learn and never stop learning. And learning, you don't just have to, you have, your, we've talked about um, mentorship and coaching. We've talked about reading. You can also have free resources online. Try to develop yourself. Keep yourself up to date. Keep yourself relevant. Learn those things so that at the end of the day, when they bring you and a man, remember that this is not um, a fight against men, but we are fighting for ourselves. So when they bring a man and a woman to campaign for the same office, you are not saying vote for me because I'm a woman. Or if you don't get voted at the end, you will not say that you were not voted because you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Instead, you can say, I have all these skills and yet I was not picked. Or you can say, if I had these skills, I would have been picked. Or better still, the testimony will be, you got voted in because you had all of these both skills. interpersonal skills and even real life skills that was needed for that role. And now as a woman, you are a student, you are a woman. Being a woman is already a full time job. You <laughs> have a whole <laughs> lot of needs. And now you are also a leader. How do you manage the time? How do you manage so that your education do not suffer because you are Madam President and also your office do not suffer because you are um, a student, so you, how do you manage, balance both lives? Okay, um, one essential skill for you to um, scale through actually is time, time management. management. Like every morning when I wake up, I have a to-do list. So um, we have um, under designated, okay, work, personal, academic. So now under work, I'll be like, okay, I have to see the dean today. I have to submit a letter. I have to address the students. Under personal, I'll be like, okay, I, I actually have to go out. Have um, a date or something. Yeah. <laughs> very important. Very important. Very 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 important. Very yes. And then, like, um, on the academics, I'll be like, okay, I, I have to complete the term paper. I have to read this topic and all of that. So it's for you to be strict on your time management mm. and follow through. Mm. And women are actually naturally born multitaskers. That's why, um, growing up, you would see your mom um, breastfeeding you and then still washing cooking. plates and still cooking. Mm. So we, we, we already have the advantage of being multitaskers. So it, it is not that hard for us to multitask. It's not for you to use the um, factor of time management to do it well and effectively so that mm. one wouldn't clash over the other. And before I end, um, I end on this, I would like to um, say one thing. One thing about women is that when we take up leadership positions, we want to prove a point. What yes. are you proving? You're not proving anything. You are there to do you your job. You are there job. to do your job. And to do it you are there to lead. Well. And then, besides leading, you have to learn to be led. Yes. You have to learn to be led. So, don't, um, women leaders out there, don't take positions because you want to prove a point. Oh, a woman can lead and, and all of that. You are being there for the people. 
And There's a reason why. Are, are you campaigning because you just want to prove a point that women can lead? Can or are you there because you saw a need, need. and you mm -hmm. felt that you would, you would um, uh, fill the, those shoes or you will fulfill those needs? So you have to also make sure that you don't lose sight of um, why you chose to campaign in the first place. Yes. So please go on. Yes. So women should, um, should not see they're going for positions and proving a point. Mm. Yes, you, you have to go there for the purpose of the work, uh, of course, that you're campaigning for. Mm. So that will make it less hectic mm. and the propaganda is mm. less scarier. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all of that. Thank Let you. us step away from that for a bit. Let us step away from that for a bit. I would have asked you about the other life, but we've already mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so Esther, I'm going to ask, are there gender stereotypes that you know that w they say women cannot do this that you know that you think is a lie that you think are myths that you like to debunk here and now why reason why men don't like to vote women but you know that these things are myths they are not true yes the stereotype that women are weaker vessels in every aspect that's the stereotype that i would love to debunk women have the same ability as men even though um biblically um, men are higher than women but when it comes to getting work done women have the same abilities as men so please we should get rid of that stereotype that women are weaker or women are too emotional we cannot we cannot um look at what is but we are looking at our hearts and all of that so we need to get rid of that of all those stereotypes please women mm. can do effectively as much as men can Yes, I, I, I totally agree with you. Do you want to add anything to that, uh, Madam yes, President? Yes, I would like to also debunk this. Most time, people don't vote for women into executive positions because they say that women will finish the money in there. They, ah. would, they, they would spend and spend and spend. <laughs> so um, when Ungo Zingwela was the chairman for World Bank, she was able to raise 49.9 billion naira for the poorest countries. She would have spent all those all, all the money in there and lived a lavish up. life. Yes, mm -hmm. so now... Um, that is a stereotype that I don't think is true. Is a myth? It's yes, a myth. yes. It depends on the person's values. Yes. Yeah, because actually it depends men, on the individual. Yeah, individual. Because actually, men out there that are even like more um, luxurious, per se. And it's been <laughs> no. said that 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 women are better planners. Yes. Better, yes. Women have better management skills. So yes. it is a lie. Yes. Yes, it is a lie. I, <laughs> I like what you said when you mentioned time management. And again, we have an episode of that on Empower Her. I, I once had a guest who she said that um, she, she, every morning she shares her tasks. She, she shares them by order of importance. Important, but urgent. Important and urgent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Important and not urgent. Mm -hmm. Urgent, but not important. <laughs> not urgent, not important. So that really opened my mind. And I've been using that ever since. And it's been working for me. So when I know that this is urgent and important, of course, it takes precedence. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this one is not even urgent, but it's important. <laughs> <laughs> so it's finding what works for you again yeah. and remembering that my pace is not your pace. Your pace. Now to round up, there are women out there who they are look they, they want to run for an office or for any type of leaders leadership position, but they are not quite sure how they'll be received. Or they are not sure that if or they, maybe their 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 doubt is what if I don't get chosen? What if I don't get elected? How would I carry my head off? What advice do you have to give to them? Because I'm sure that before you came out running, you also had plans. If you don't work well, me, I'll continue going my way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, um, two years ago, before um, I started the whole campaign and all of that, um, I, I, I worship at Destiny, Archbishop Plato's Basi. So he said something while preaching. He said that God doesn't choose the qualified or qualifies who he chooses. Mm. So never you feel that you are not able just because um, it seems as if you have all the qualities that there is. Now, quality is all about growth. Now, who I am today is not who I will be in the next five years because yes. I'll be better. Mm. Because and it's of not who growth. you were five years yeah, ago. Yeah, I knew I was not five, five, five years ago. So it's all about growth. And then women out there, I dare you to dare to dream. Mm. You, you can do it. Is a dare. Yes, yes, I am daring you. You can do it. And trust me, once... Once you take that bold step, once once you take that that bold step and make it a reality, you'll be encouraging other women behind you too. Mm. So you can do it. Trust me, you can. And even yourself, you'll be amazed at what you what you can do. Because I remember when I used to set tasks, I still do that, but not at the scale I used to do. When I set tasks for my day, any time that I finish up, I I, I carry my uh, post it and I discover that I've literally done everything I wrote. The next day, I want to do more. Mm -hmm. I want to add more. Yeah. So, and this is not just in tasks. 
you'll find out that you have more abilities than you give yourself credit for. So when you are doing this, you are also helping yourself. And again, like we said, helping those who are following you, those whose destinies are all tied to your own. <laughs> okay, Esther, as a goodbye to the viewers, there are young ladies out there right now. They are not quite sure what to do with themselves. They're not even sure they want to be in leadership positions. And that's okay. Not everybody will be a leader. But they're just there. They don't... It's, it's as if their life is currently in a rut. What advice would you give to them? Well, my advice to them is I usually see that um, having um, scanned through the internet, Instagram, Twitter, and all of that, I would say that there is, there is an industry for everybody. No matter what it is that you are doing, there is an industry for you, whether you're into, into crafts, whether you're into um, academics, whether you're into leadership, tech, and all of that. There is, there is an industry for you, and the industry is ready to welcome you. I mean, women are out there fighting to make sure that these industries welcome you. So if you are at, at a point in your life where you're not so sure of what to do, just look within you, your abilities, where you do better in. And then, of course, the industry is there for you. So take that bold step. Madam President say, dare to <laughs> <I> dream. I <laughs> dare you. I and also you. dare you. Dare to dream with whatever, with whatever strength that you have. The industry is there for you. So just step into it and grab it all. Ah, mm -hmm. thank you so much, ladies. You have been wonderful. Thank and myself, so I will tell you that if you decide to take Madam President's there <laughs> and to do it, I am telling you that I so much believe in you. I know for a fact that you can do it. You might do it, you might have done it the first time and you not work out very well. That is okay. The next time you do better, you learn from your previous mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. The next time you learn from your previous mistake and you do even better. And you keep growing and you find yourself doing even better things. So, for today, just drink lots of water. And of course, as we conclude this episode, let us celebrate the remarkable potential of young women and the vital role of these strategies and resources in nurturing their leadership abilities. Thank you for joining us on Empower Her. We extend our gratitude to our inspiring guest, the president, <laughs> and her advice. Thanks and the, to you, of course, my wonderful women who are out there, who are emerging as powerful leaders, as forces to be reckoned with. Don't forget to stay connected with us on Facebook at Spectrum NGX, at Spectrum T online. Reach out to me personally on Facebook, LinkedIn, and X at Best Watching Emery. And of course, don't forget that you can drop me um, an email anytime, any day, or my email address at bestwatchingemery60 at gmail.com. Until we meet again, this is Best Watching Emery signing off from Empower Her. Farewell for now, and may the strategies and resources that we have discussed here today empower you to lead inspire you to change your world and inspire you to know that you are the very ver you are the very best version of yourself thank you